Okay, today I'm gonna redo the spectrum analyzer because again I'm getting some feed some feedback that are not coming very well. Well I'm just gonna throw in this and I'm just gonna put in some chords. I'm going to throw in the spectrum analyzer. I like to use accurate and fast and eliminate the bins. And what you want to do is check out where they hit. As you can see, this line right here, if I was to stop it right now, right here when, once you stop this you can see it says E1 right here just check the box and as you can see E1 G1 and B1 that shows up right here E1, G1, B1 but now you have all these sounds popping up all this some of this stuff you don't want to listen to. You don't want you don't want the sound to come in through. And this will probably conflict with a lot of the high note, high frequencies like the hi hats and snares and stuff like that because they will be in the, around this range. The snares will be in the one kilohertz and s snare. I mean, and hi hats will be probably in the ten kilohertz, depending on how you put them in. So you need to put in an EQ. I like to use an EQ8 behind this. Put all eight equalizer on this one. I use to knock out all of the frequencies. Put it around there and then listen to it again. This range right here, E1 is right about the 84.1 Hertz. So you would like to take this and go all the way down, knock it down, and go to the 81. It says 81, 83 hertz. Around 84 is perfectly fine. You can leave it right there. 77 or 80 hertz. And then bring this up a little bit more and then just pop it up. But the problem when you start eliminating these frequencies right here then your sound is not going to sound so full. It's going to sound muddy a little bit. People say it does it, but it does because if, there's a big difference from here to having these frequencies sound a little bit because it gives that little bit of a touch snap into the sound. You see? So basically, is try to mold it out. See, it you're knocking out, you're knocking out all the frequencies that give that nice little bit of a touch on the high notes, on the high frequency. So it's always good to have some sound going on, but once you have the whole entire mix going on, you're gonna have to start doing this again basically because you want the sound to sound fuller like let's say if I put in 
reverb tape some feedback And then another example will be the drums. I'm going to give you an example of what a drum would do in your sound as well. I'm going to use my own drum. Let's say we take the spectrum analyzer and we put it into the drum rack. And we're going to eliminate this sound. I'm going to solo it. The drum is actually going into G0, which will be in this range right here right here so you have enough room for the kick to sound and give that space so it's actually right here so if you was to put another spectrum analyzer into your main master and put them to work at the same time. The kick is in the G0. And if you go all the way up right here where you start seeing these little peaks right there. right about here E1 you can tell right here at this point is where you have your first chord going in and you got your G1 and B1 which is around the hertz that I just told you at right about here 81 
which will probably be in the same course around here. It wouldn't be around here at all because you can't hear it, but it starts right here. And if you want to do that, you can do you can just eliminate the sound just by going right into the 100 hertz. this down just level it out right here E1 and it's in the 82 hertz right now. Right here. It's about right here. So this is a good tool because you can actually see what's going on. But every time you start putting effects, it's going to manipulate the sound as well. But what you got to keep in mind what you got to keep in mind is that you got to go with what you have in the chords here on each instance and then your sounds are going to be really clean always wherever you know where your kicks is first landing when you're making your patterns like over here the kick is right here no matter what it's hitting right in this range on the 50 hertz So that lands there, and if you not, if you're having some doubts, go in and put the spectrum in the in the master channel, and just look at the master channel as well. Your case is right here. Again, G zero on the 48 hertz, probably in the 48 50 hertz. Is right here, yeah, 50 hertz. All this is noise that um, really sometimes will bring your mix a little bit muddier and not clean enough. So it all depends on how you want it. As you can see here in the kick, the sound just drops. You can drop it more. prefer to leave it that way. Then, once you have that done going on, you could clean it, but then your sound is not going to sound as good as clean. back to life when you start playing with the auto filter. Why? Because you're taking just now now you're just taking all these peaks from what you have here. The same little lines that you have here on the auto filter are the same ones over here as it comes to the frequency. You can't tell but it is. It's the same ones going in over here as well. So if you Since there's no information over here, it's not picking up no sounds at all.
that's a way of using the spectrum analyzer. Um, hope this was a good tutorial. I mean, it's a quick tutorial, but if I was to put a hat going on, let's say the hats, or hats, hats, hats. You actually see what I'm trying to talk about. difficult to get the sound polish you could but mainly I'm thinking right now it's in the around here A sharp G sharp because all this is all noise and now uh, if you was to kind of go into conclusion with this just put an EQ8 to polish the sound and see what you can get out of it see how the sound just goes down you need you actually need to leave that kind of It's basically around this range. Always the high notes are in this range. So, in the mix, Ableton Live Spectrum Analyzer. I hope it was a good tutorial. Enjoy the rest of the days and I'll come up with some more tutorials up in the following coming days right now. But right now I just lost my, my, my one and only friend which was my dog and I'm a little bit sad and it's a little bit of a hard hit for me to get over the fact. You know, sometimes you in some of my videos you hear her barking around so I just lost her this past Saturday. So I'm still holding on to other stuff that is, you know, it's not, it's keeping me away from the computer because I'm always remembering my pup, my, my one and only friend that I had for four years, which I lost this past weekend. So have a good one, take care, peace.